hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at what are guards and how we can use them to control the access to certain sections of our application based on roles or many other such stuff so let's get started so before we start writing the code you need to understand that in nest there are two things which are quite similar in nature one is the middleware and one is the guard okay but then the middleware generally is not very much application aware whereas in guards what we can do is we can switch context to http and many other aspects of the application and then we can make certain kinds of decisions okay so you can say middlewares are a little more dumb compared to guards guards are much more you know application aware okay so the first thing that i'm going to do is if you see our swagger api we have this quiz create api right and what i'm thinking of doing is that we will make this only accessible to admin urls i mean sorry admin role holders so how do we do that so obviously we will need a user which needs to be admin why don't we first go to our database seeds user created data and here add this user as admin so i have added this new key which is role by default it becomes member so any new user which is registering to the use uh, application is a member role holder whereas now i have specifically said that this is a user of type admin so this should work in the meantime i'll also run db refresh okay and while this happens what we want to do is inside our modules auth we can create a guard typically i would say the guards are inside the authentication module so i'll create a new file called admin role guard.ts and the guard class will implement can active activate okay all right so now because this is an interface it needs to implement a method which is this can activate okay i'll just get rid of that thing and we are going to return a promise and boolean okay sync so or i'll actually keep it for later we'll figure that out later okay um so can activate by default it returns true or let's just say it returns false okay so you know the safest option is that you negate everything you say that any user should not have access to this and then we pick up the request context because by now we know that the users are authenticated so what we can do is we have the execution context over here so we will switch to the http context and then get request because we have the request object over here if you remember from my previous videos where we talked about the jwt auth guard you will know that the request will have the user context or the user object in it that's what passport is going to do for us right so what we can do over here is although i know that the user object will be there i'm still putting a question mark over here so if i have the user okay i get the id and then i need to somehow get the id uh, user object by this id okay because um let me quickly show you jwt auth auth service inside auth service i am only sending the name and the id i'm not sending the email or the role okay although i can potentially do that but then uh, i don't want to 
show the information in my JWT. I want to keep everything as much tied up inside the application as possible, a little more secure, right? So I need a way to get the user object based on the ID. Obviously, this is something which we need to look at in our user service. So let's see what all things do we have in our user service. We have do registration, which is fine. Let's collapse this. We have get user by email, but we don't have get user by ID. So I'll just do this. Simple enough. We have this method, which is inside the user service. It takes the ID, returns the user. If we get the user, then it's fine. Otherwise, it's undefined. Straightforward. Now, constructor, we need the user service, right? We need to inject it. And I think this is going to fail the moment I inject the user service. Let's see. Starting the application. First of all, let's see even if we get certain things, right? I think we haven't even done that. So quiz controller, because that's the URL where we are trying to um, get the guard, right? So we have something called use guards. And in that, I'll do admin role guard. Okay, I have injected it. So it should be at the rate injectable. Okay, it says the app. Okay, the app is running, I think. Okay, that's my bad. Right. So I'm making it injectable over here. And then inside the controller, I am importing it. So far, so good. It is not complaining about anything. Let's see. Admin role guard. This is fine. And now, why don't we? do console log id and i'll just hit this url it says forbidden resource that's interesting why is that right that's because by default it is returning false and return true okay now it should allow me to create as you can see the console was there even then okay if i if i comment it out let me do that it was invalidating or it was stopping the response because my default behavior is to return false okay which is the safest option but now if i go and i create okay can you see the console one over here that's this id okay so we are here at least uh, till this point our code is executing so why don't we then try and get the user so i have a user service and now i think it should fail it will complain about some dependencies yes it is saying that nest cannot resolve dependencies on the admin role guard please make sure that the argument user service is available to quiz module and why would that be the case I think because the quiz module is using the guard, which in turn, let me try and understand. So the quiz module is using this guard, which is fine. It's injectable and this requires the user service. Okay. So that's why the quiz module requires the user module. I'm not sure if I need to export the injectable thing ideally not because it's in the same module okay this is working so let me go back over here and we are able to inject right which means then i can do something like constant user equals this dot user service dot get user by id ID it's something like this okay yes I'm gonna make this a sync so far so good and then I will print this okay what next let's see if I now go to swagger it still continues to be a 403 but I am getting the role right 
so we will return user dot role equals role user roles dot admin okay that's the true or false which we are planning to return and this automatically means that right now because our user is an admin I'm able to create that quiz. See, ID3, ID4. But if I go to my users table, this is admin. Why don't I change it to member? Okay, this is saved. Hit refresh. Yes, this is correct. Now, if I go to this URL again, and if I try to create one more quiz, or last one ID was four. Now, can you see I'm getting a 403 again? Why is that? Because right now, it doesn't return true for this condition. So as you can see, this is so easy way to create your guards. And guards, obviously, you know, I have added this right now to the this particular method. You can add it even to the controller. And in that way, all the URLs inside that controller will follow that guard. So I guess that's about it. That's what I wanted to cover. I, I wanted to explain you what is the basic difference between middleware and guards and how we can create a role guard, which is admin role guard to ensure that some of the routes, for example, the quiz create is only available to users who have the role of admin. So if you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.